Uh, my name is Nico Smith. Uh, Nico the Mexi Negro, for those who don't know me. Uh, I've been doing stand-up comedy for five years in November. So yeah, about like, let's, let's say four and some change, five years. All right, I am really excited about this next comedian coming to the stage. This young man uh, has been doing comedy for a while and has now started to do some traveling. Uh, you can find him anywhere here in Atlanta, but tonight he's going to be on On My Time TV. Please welcome to the stage next, your next comedian, Nico Smith! <laughs> comedy man I've been doing comedy five years man this is the best job ever yo like I get to travel all over the country man I get to talk to people meet people all the time man this shit is dope like I don't got so good at talking and joking with people just the other day I got pulled over by the cops right I just joked with him for five minutes and I didn't even get a ticket for real yeah. I mean Nick shot me but <laughs> I ain't get no ticket <laughs> Hey, it's crazy. You'll never hear about Mexicans getting shot by the cops, do you? Nah, bro. Police know better, man. There'll be 1,500 of them at the police station tomorrow screaming, Justice for Jesus! <laughs> and see, look, that's a problem, but that's not even the real problem, though, because now cops gotta worry about random white people joining in the protests and shit, because y'all just gonna be driving by to see a bunch of signs that says, Justice for Jesus. And... <laughs> And next thing you know, Joseph and Jesus, well, I can get behind that. All right. <laughs> It'll be so easy to join, too, because you know how 1,500 of those Mexicans came in about nine cars, so shit. <laughs> Why people gonna pull up? It's like, I've never been to a rally like this in my life, but the parking is so good. Oh my god. <laughs> Black lives wouldn't matter if the parking was better. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Paying audience. <laughs> I'm most comfortable performing in front of a paying audience, really. Uh, I've performed all over the country, man. I've been to Wisconsin to, to, to tell jokes, man. Pretty much anybody who just has a good sense of humor, right? Uh, not trying to like, you know what I'm saying, sound like arrogant or whatever, but I'm pretty dope. So it's like, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you're there, you're probably gonna be entertained. <laughs> <laughs> I can make a joke about black people and then I can make a joke about Mexican because I'm actually mixed with black and Mexican. In a Trump America, I'm fucked. Uh, I'm gonna get shot by the cops and then my body's gonna get deported. Uh, <laughs> growing up makes it super confusing, man. It's especially confusing on my Mexican side because, like, I didn't understand Mexican stereotypes growing up, man. Because my Mexican side of my family, they're like good. They're over in Houston. They got like nice houses. They all lawyers, business owners, 401k, stock options, and shit. Like, my Mexican side of my family got so much money, white people cut their grass. So, <laughs> it's been the same white family my whole life, too. So, every time I go to visit, I make sure to say hi to Chandler. Because it's like he's part of the family. He's almost allowed to eat with us. Like, <laughs> Oh man, I love hecklers. Uh, I deal with hecklers way that I feel like anybody should. Uh, you can't get offended and make it like a big deal. Just pretty much if you put yourself out there to, I, I, I like relish in the opportunity to make you look stupid. So please, so, so like, like it makes my day better. I get to like download all my frustrations in my life onto one person. So please, please, I encourage you to heckle if I'm having a bad day. Please, I love dealing with hecklers. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, growing up mixed is even more confusing, man, when your Mexican grandma is racist as hell. Uh, true story. My Mexican grandma was telling me there's a little Negro and I had sickle cells. <laughs> and no punchline of that shit, it's just a true story. <laughs> and I know for a fact that she's racist too, because I have three white Mexican cousins Dustin, Casey, and Keegan. That's how you know they're actually white. Uh, <laughs> And she said she loved us all equally, whatever. And she gave us all like nicknames, but it'd be like time to eat or something. She would mess up my name on purpose. So she'd be like, Dusty, come and eat. Giger, come and eat. Nico, I mean, Nico, come and eat. Uh, oh, bitch. Uh, I know, like, you're not supposed to disrespect your elders or whatever, but I thought Negro was my name until I was seven, and my mama was just pronouncing it wrong. It's like, uh uh, it's not Nico, it's Negro. You didn't say it right. <laughs> 
It's actually kind of crazy, man, because my grandma, my grandma's actually really sick right now. Uh, you know, so I just found out recently that she's like really sick and it's looking like she might be on her way out. I know, it's unfortunate. Like, I feel bad for my family, but I especially feel bad for my grandfather. Because my grandfather committed suicide when I was 16 to get away from this bitch. So, <laughs> so in a couple weeks, he gonna be pissed. <laughs> Was a hoe. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me explain. Let me explain. Make sure y'all's paying attention. My mom had two kids before she's 20, but that's not why I'm calling her a hoe. Uh, I'm calling her a hoe because of my name. As I just told y'all, my name is Nico. I'm black and Mexican. And I found out recently that Nico is actually a Japanese name. Like, yeah. That's like being white. Your mama's Irish, your daddy's German, but your name is the Quan. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> And it's not even just the name, it's the spelling of the name, right? Cause she spelled my name N-E-I-K-O, which means she ain't graduated high school either cause she put the E before the I. Uh, <laughs> and y'all went to school, say it with me, man. It's I before E, except after C. Well, this is a teen pregnancy, apparently. Uh, see, look, don't trip. Don't trip, y'all looking at me crazy. I'll tell that joke in front of 300 people while my mom was in the crowd, she was cool, bro. It's, it's cool. It's cool. I just can't eat at their house for Thanksgiving. So like, can I even one of y'all? <laughs> I had Waffle House last year. It was very depressing. <laughs> white people make some noise. Where the white people at? Hey, y'all better. Got that. All right, in the front, looking like y'all at a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> white people, white people, man, y'all need to respect y'all selves more, man, because there's a lot going on in this country, man, but y'all need to respect y'all selves more because y'all know how fucking crazy y'all look eating at a place called Cracker Barrel. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, black people would never eat at a place called Nigga House. That's all I'm saying. A Mexican would never eat at a place called the Wetback Bar and Grill. But a Mexican would work in all three of those motherfuckers. <laughs> Uh, some mentors I'll have when I um first first got started uh, I literally had like no idea how to go about getting started doing comedy and the literally the first co comedian I ever seen live and on stage right in front of me was Rodney Perry uh, I just went to a comedy club just on random just trying to figure out what to do and it was uh, Tyler Dose who's on um, Wild and Out right now uh, I mean Tyler Chronicles excuse me and then uh, Rodney Perry with the two performing and, uh, and pretty much ever since then, they was the first one. They let me talk to them after the show. They let me know like what shows to go to and how to get started. And said, so yeah, I would say those two would probably be two. Donald Trump tripping, man. Donald Trump tripping. Talk about getting rid of all the Mexicans, man. This shit's crazy. And I agree with him. All the Mexicans should leave. Uh, but they shouldn't leave because he wants them to leave. They should leave on like some petty shit. Like, y'all don't want us here. Bet. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go. Next thing you know, you see footage from the border. Mexicans walking whole houses on their back. Nigga, just taking, <laughs> taking all the Applebee's out this motherfucker. All the Chipotle. But leaving Taco Bell because that's not our shit anyway. So, fuck it. <laughs> And look, I know how to shut down this whole racist ass thought process, man. In two ways, two phases, right? The first phase, right? Okay, we're gonna take, like I said, we're gonna take, uh, fuck, I fucked this joke up all the way up. First phase. <laughs> we're gonna close the border behind us after we all leave and shit. And you know what the number one export out of Mexico is? Let Trump tell it is rapists and killers. You know what it really is? Avocados. Yeah. Yeah. Then next thing you know, white women trying to jump over the wall talking about <laughs> Oh my god, they're good for my skin. I need my omega 3s. Give them to me. How dare you? Alright, let's say one more. We'll get the fuck out of here. Uh, who's ever been to Tallahassee, man? Been to Tallahassee. Hey. Tallahassee, man. That shit racist as fuck, ain't it? They don't play with black people unless they play with Florida State's football or basketball team. <laughs> like, uh, my sister goes to Florida State, and I went to go visit her recently, man. And while I was down there, I bumped into this white dude, and he called me a nigga. Like, I don't really trip on that word, man. I'm like, I'm mixed. And plus, I'm like, light-skinned, I would have been in the house anyway, so fuck it. Uh, <laughs> I just correct him and tell him I'm actually Mexican. But then he calls me a wetback. And I'm just like, wow, this motherfucker's rude. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I, I correct him one more time and tell him I'm actually black and Mexican. But then he calls me a wet nigga. And then I say, what the fuck? <laughs> Man called me a wet nigga, y'all. 
That's not even the worst part, too. You said, I bet you'd be so confused whenever you see one of them KFC Taco Bells, you don't be knowing what the hell to do, do you? <laughs> Kept talking shit too. He's like, I bet you swim mediocre. It's like, what the fuck? As <laughs> a matter of fact, sir, I get a two piece and a quesadilla. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, man, my name's Nico Smith, man. Y'all can call me boy. Right, he is really excited. I didn't like some. I didn't like some of that nigga shit. I didn't like that chicken. What was that? The wet chicken nigga? I don't know. Watermelon nigga. Restaurant. What? <laughs> Yo, Nico. One more time for Nico Smith. Man. I'm the host, Julia Osborne. My man, Nico Smith. Oh my God, y'all have no idea what you missed. There's so much diversity. Nico is one of my favorite comedians for the night. Uh, Nico. Tell the people if you had a good time. Just tell the people what's up. I indubitably had an ecstatic time in this event and venue, and it's still to the amazing hostess that is before me, Miss Julie Osborne. Do I sound like Macho Man Randy Savage? That's what I'm. Yeah, thinking. you do, you do, you do. Yo, so tell me, tell me what, what is it, what is it about your comedy style that you enjoy the most, that you get to share with people? I love when I say something like off the wall. I like getting that reaction. You know what I'm saying? Before like the laugh, like the pour the punch line. Okay. Like when I call my mama a hoe and I want to make sure everybody's paying attention. Like, <laughs> Okay, well I would have to say that uh, On My Own TV does not actually authorize and promote calling your mamas a hoe, but somehow my man here makes it funny. So thank you so much for joining us tonight On My Own TV here with Chamley Tucker, Atlanta, Georgia. On My Time TV. Did I say on my own? I want to be on my own, but it's on my time. It's cartels. I tell you, boom, cut hater, y'all rot. Hey, it's your boy Nico Smith, man. Catch me on OMT TV. Hey, what's up, y'all, man? It's your boy G Way holding it down. G Way Radio Show. Tonight it went down. It was off the chain. On my time, TV. The comedians, they were off the chain. I enjoyed myself fully. You don't know, you got to get here. OMT TV. That's where it's at. On my time, TV. This comedy show, it was lit. That's what the young folks say, right? It was lit. We had an amazing time, guys. Every Hey everybody, oh my gosh, the show was so awesome. I actually had no idea what to expect, but all of the comedians were funny. Me and my friend came together, we were laughing at everybody. It was a great time, I can't wait for the next one. I thought the show was incredible. I love the diversity of the people performing, the diversity of the crowd. We had young, old, black, white, gay, straight, whatever. It was just a fun mix for everybody, so come on down. I am here at the Buckeye Room. Just witnessed a phenomenal comedy show. I have to tell you that it's hilarious. Really enjoyed it. it didn't come with the highest expectations, but I like it all the way. Can't wait for the next The comedy show was the best show tonight. I had an amazing time. The host, Julie Osborne, fantastic, phenomenal, funny, super funny. All the acts were super funny, super amazing. It's my first time out here, and I'll definitely be coming back. Great show. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I thought they didn't like me. I thought they thought I was being rude, but I was having fun. I enjoyed it all. Oh. Yo, I had an amazing time. I'm Dre Dennis, and you need to come out to this show next time. Uh, this is the OMT TV Network. Oh my gosh. Yo, this is amazing. The show was so funny. This was so entertaining. You can definitely find this at, on OMTTV.com. 